Good evening. I hope you will understand my English. I have a funny story at the beginning of our conference. I was speaking with somebody and uh, I explained to him that I am a parish priest of the Diocese of Avignon and that I have 16 villages in my parish. But because of my bad English, he understood 16 religious. <laughs> so he looked at me and said, what do you mean? You have 16 religious in your parish? Like Sister Joanna? <laughs> she was at the next table. <laughs> Unfortunately, I have not 16 religious in my parish. Like Sister Joanna. It would help me a lot for catechesis. <laughs> so, <clears throat> before speaking about Christ at the center of catechesis, and particularly in the Come Follow Me catechetical service, I would like to speak about the genesis of this catechetical series. The Come Follow Me series is not the result of some personal project, but the result of a teamwork at the request of many catechists, not only in France, but also in other countries. Everything starts with five to seven year old children. At this age, they are very close to God. Their baptismal grace makes them capable of God. And it is so important that their personality be able to, be, to build itself up in the light of the grace of God. Starting with the little ones, is also a grace for the catechist because it makes the catechist go back to the basics, to the essentials. So, a first generation of children was led to this encounter with God. And as they grew up, we had to continue the series. That is how, progressively, the Come, Follow Me series took shape at the request of the Archbishop of Avignon. In the 1990s, after the fall of communism, we were called in by bishops and by catechetical centers in Central and Eastern Europe to work with them in set setting up catechesis in these countries that had been ravaged, ravaged by 40 years of atheistic materialism. This contact with other countries also helped us go beyond the specific context of France. To present our work, I would like to tell you the story of a little boy in my parish. His name is Paul. He's nine years old. His family is a divorced and remarried family, and no one in it is a believer, or in any case, they are all far from the church and not practicing. Paul, was brought to catechism by his friends. He's a little boy, like all the others, capable of being very energetic. <laughs> but the catechist noticed his desire to pray. Let me explain how it all works. The sessions begin by a time of welcome in a space called the place of fraternal living. They then go to the place of the meeting. This expression 
is taken from the book of Exodus, you know, where Moïse meet God in the tent of the meeting. And Anne-Marie will illustrate this for you in a few moments. The children are brought progressively to listening and to sharing the word of God. We always pray the Holy Spirit at the beginning of this time, even if the children do not know him yet. The word of God goes down deep into the heart of each child to enlighten each one and to accomplish its work of conversion. The word lights up the life of the children. A time of personal prayer is always proposed. The children can stay as long as they like in the place of the meeting. So, Paul often stays a long time and this surprises the catechist because he has not been coming to catechism for a long time. I often go from group to group to see the children individually, to speak with them or to hear confessions. Paul doesn't know what confession is yet. He comes to see me to say that he likes to pray, but that he can't go to Mass because his family never goes. So I tell him to pray in his home on Sunday and give him some practical advice on how to do this. I also give him a rosary. And at the end of our meeting, before giving him the blessing, I ask him if he wants to say something to Jesus. Paul closes his eyes, becomes silent, and says, Je t'aime, Jésus. Jesus, I love you. A few months later, Paul asks me to make his first communion. In the regular catechetical program, we wait for children themselves to ask for the sacrament of baptism or Eucharist. The Holy Spirit is working in their hearts and the desire for communion with Jesus grows in them. We then propose a specific catechesis to prepare for first communion or baptism, in addition to the regular catechesis. In Paul's case, it took many long discussions with his parents in order for them to accept to drive their little boy to this meeting. At the day when Paul will make his first Holy Communion, he comes to see me and ask for confession. Then he asks, can my family come see you for confession? I, of course, say yes to his request, request and give him a date. But since I know his family a little, I ask him, are you sure they really want to come? So he says, my mother asked me what I wanted as a gift. So I said, I just want one gift. It's really the only gift that I want. My mother said she'd give it to me if she was able to. So little Paul tells me that the gift he asked for was that all his family go to confession. <laughs> the next Saturday, I saw Paul's mother, his stepfather, his grandmother, and so, arrive at church. You know, the situation was not an easy one to manage. <laughs> but Paul was the praying in the church. 
When the day for the First Communion comes, Paul leaves his First Communion with much recollection and takes it very seriously. At the end of the Mass, all the families rush to the altar to take pictures. It's a joyful mess. <laughs> Paul's mother comes to see me and says, I am looking for my son. He disappeared. Have you seen him? I tell her, don't worry. I think I know where he is. So I go to Our Lady's Chapel, where I find Paul sitting in a corner with tears on his face, making his prayer of thanksgiving. The reason I told you this story is to show that the Holy Spirit, what the Holy Spirit does in the heart of a child who doesn't live in ideal condition, is the only one in his family who has faith. Many catechists could give their testimony saying, saying that the education to the interior life and to personal prayer allows the word of God to be received at, as what it truly is, a living and active word. This word touches their heart and goes into their life as blessed John Paul II say to catechists in 1990. The catechesis reaches a particularly critical moment when it becomes a school of prayer that is to say, a formation for a full and loving encounter with God, with Creator and Father, Christ, Master and Savior, Holy Spirit who gives life. Thanks to this encounter, what we are and what we learn doesn't not, doesn't not stay exclusively in our minds, but touches the heart and tries to pass into our lives. Indeed, catechesis cannot content itself with simply proclaiming the truth of faith. It should also aim at arousing the response of man, so that each person play his part of, in the plan of salvation and be ready to offer his life for the mission of the church. So catechesis is a school of prayer. I am sure that all catechists would like their catechesis to be a school of prayer. But how can this be done? It's not just a matter of saying a prayer. The team of Notre Dame de Vie looks at the school of the Saint of Carmel, whose charism is precisely to open up the path of the meeting with God in prayer. The Carmel finds its roots in the spirit of Elijah. The Lord is alive, in whose presence I stand. And I burn with zeal for the Lord. The Carmelite masters have continuously drawn on this double movement and aspire to follow the fundamental rule of the Order of Carmel to meditate the word of the Lord day and night. Father Mario Eugène of the Child Jesus, Carmelite and founder of Notre Dame de Vie Secular Institute encourage its member to learn how to catechize and to lead up to this encounter with the living God. He particularly felt the need to push for catechesis for little children. The example given earlier helps us to understand why. 
Catechesis is a full and loving encounter with the Holy Trinity. The aim of catechesis is, as you know all from CT5, to put in communion with Jesus and through him with the Trinity. It is by Jesus and in him that we have access to communion with the Father in the Holy Spirit. So the catechesis program follows a liturgical year to reveal the mystery of God Trinity. The first stage corresponds to the first school trimester. The catechesis starts by preparing children to receive this revelation of God, Creator and Father. This will be illustrated by a slide show in just a few moments. At the same time, the Word of God reveals man to himself. The human person discovers that he is created by God, capable of entering into a relationship with God and capable of knowing and loving him. The first part of the catechism was a mystery of God enlightened, sorry, this first part of catechesis, where the mystery of God enlightens the mystery of the human person, is very important. That is where many things fall into place. The education of interiority, the education of the conscience, the sense of the meaning of life. This first stage leads to the desire to receive Jesus, Master and Savior. This is the second stage which goes from Advent to Easter. By listening to Jesus, following him from his birth to the Paschal mystery, the child is called to make an act of faith in the divinity of Jesus an act of faith in Jesus, the Savior. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Savior. This act of faith, of course, can be expressed with different words. In Paul's story, it was, Jesus, I love you. We are here at the center of catechesis. By faith and by love, the child is truly in intimacy with Jesus. The desire to love Jesus, to follow him, and to receive him in the sacrament fills his heart. Desiring and waiting for the gift of the Spirit is the beginning of the third stage. The Spirit who is the last to be revealed in catechesis, is in fact acting from the beginning. He is the one who works in the heart and causes the desire to God to grow. It is the spirit that works within the heart of man, in his intelligence and in his will and in his memory to order to lead to Jesus. It is in the spirit that the mystery of the church is discovered progressively. I will not develop these points any further. I just would like to say again what James Pauley said about the importance of an organic and ordered presentation of the truth of faith in order to truly enter in communion with God. And now, Father Pierre de Quinté will speak about the basis of Christocentrism in catechesis.